Hi. So, here I am. We're in a perfectly good daily again. As some of you may remember, when I bought this truck, it came with a set of 20s with 3312 all terrains on it. And it already had this Rough Country leveling kit installed when I bought it. That was all fine and dandy. Took it to Silver Lake with 33s on, had a good time, yada yada. That's fine. If you know me, you know I like vehicles with a lower altitude and to go fast. Definitely loud. Game plan for this thing has always been once it's paid off to build a twin turbo setup for it. So in the meantime, we're going to get the project started by getting it from its elevated stance to a much lower stance with this Belltech lowering kit that I acquired and these factory 20s with these Toyo Proxies. 305 55 20s. I traded all the dits for those offset 20s with the 33s on there that came with the truck. First things first, I need to get the front struts set up. And obviously, as you can see, you need to use your factory springs and strut tops. Those are rough country, rough country, see? Country of the rough. Leveling struts. Those springs aren't going to work, but I was lucky enough to also get the factory struts with the truck. First things first, I'm going to read the instructions, of which there are many. And then we're going to get the struts set up. So this isn't just uh, drop shackles and different struts in the front and make it sit all kitty wampus cambered in. This kit so you can get done, align it properly so you don't have tire wear issues. And it has you relocating the rear axle to achieve four inches of drop in the rear. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna start doing things. Thing I do wanna check before we get started is I wanna measure from the ground to the wheel well right now and see where it's at. It ain't gonna be a good comparison from factory cause this ain't factory. Also, Debbie Downer, I'm not gonna be able to keep airbags because the axle's gonna be in that space. So, go back on, but I'm gonna have to make mounts to put them on top of the leaf mount and then to bracket off the, it ain't happening today. So we're just worried about lowering it, but let's get a measurement real quick. Let's see. So in the rear, it's looking like just shy of 41. And in the front, about 40 and a half. 40 ish. Yeah, close enough. All right, time to get to work. A few moments later. All right, now that it's up in the air, we're going to go ahead and start by getting the spindle off and out of the way get the strut removed and i'm taking the spindle completely off and the lower control arm also off because we need to slot the lower control arm bolt holes so that way when it comes to alignment time we have enough movement to get the camber in where it's supposed to be and then we'll move to the rear a little longer than a few minutes later. Ta-da! Oh, there we go. Ta-da! Ta-da! They're out. Yay! So, like I said, instructions have us taking the lower control arm bolts out and adding a little bit more to the slot for alignment purposes. This guy, this guy, right here. Him don't want to move. So I'm going to use an array of beating devices and try to get that dealt with before we start assembling the new front struts. That did it. 
So now, oh, oh you the joys of not having a camera person. All right, there we go. Control arms are dangling by the sway bar link ends. Not recommended, I'm lazy. Did not really care to fight with those because I'm impatient. So there, control arms are out of the way. I can get to doctoring these holes up and then we can move on to the struts. Later. Control arm are loosely back in there. Holes have been slotted. Now we need to go over to the strut tamer and uh, get these factory ones jigged up, compress the spring so we can get the strut tops off and then transfer them to the new ones. We've got the first one in there. I know it's kind of tilted, but I do that so that way I can get the socket on here with my impact and swivel to buzz that off. So now, we we'll spin that doohickey, compress this doohickey, take that thingy my bobber off, and then the strut will fall out, and then we'll come put our nose straw in, and it'll be like ta da! One more, one more to go. Twenty minutes later. Now that the struts are put back together, it's time to get them in the front of the truck, get that all back assembled. And we can turn our attention to the rear of the bus. Six hours later. All right, front's all put back together. I'm probably going to have to loosen up the lower control arms with weight on it, so that way the bushings can settle and then retighten them. And as you can see, this tire's pointing this way, this one's pointing that way. So I am gonna struggle. And when I say struggle, I mean struggle. Get the rear dealt with and then once i get the rear dealt with and the tires back on and we set it on the ground i'll revisit you guys and we can go over how much of a cocksucker it was the biggest pain in the ass you're gonna run into is selling this kit this here leaf bolt which is captured in there by the gas tank and it has to come out because we have drop brackets for this. But the instructions have you loosen it just enough that you can get a sawzall in there and then you lock this off and knock it out the other way. Kit comes with new hardware, so yeah, just... Yep. All right, leaf spring's out. Now, once you get the leaf spring out, a couple things. Uh, this is gonna be on top like this, and these bolts right here are gonna be the other way around. I already have this one. I just got done flipping it. Slow that grab of the camera. But what you gotta do is take these nuts off, take these bolts out, get rid of that plate, and then spin them around so the balls part that sits in the block is on top of the leaf and not on the bottom because the axle will be riding on the top now. Now I just gotta do it on the other side. Install bracket tree. Blah, blah, blah. And struck arms. Yup, yup, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. One pair of pants later. I was right, the rear was a cocksucker. But uh, ow, fucking wow, dude. That stance though, yes. Oh my God, yes. But as you can tell, currently it's pigeon toed like a motherfucker. So we're gonna gimp it over to the alignment rack and uh, get it did. Ow, fucking wow. All right, so let's measure the wheel well gap now that we got her all aligned. What the difference do? Shoo wee. 35 and a half in the front, 36 in the rear. And I'm not gonna complain one bit because I am in love with the stance of this thing. So I really wanted to get you guys some good beauty shots of the truck, but it is just, you know, It's uh, it's not real nice out right now. So 
About the closest thing to a beauty we're gonna get of this thing is it dripping dry here in the shop before I go home. To be honest, I couldn't not be happier with the Beltec. Four inch in the rear, up to three inch drop in the front. This Beltec kit is legit. I mean, the thing rides so much better. The only thing I did different than the instructions say is the rear leaf shackles. The ones that they send are technically a lift shackle. So I just went ahead and reused the factory ones. And by doing so, it got it to sit level. The guy I got this Beltec kit from, he had it installed with the shackles provided it sat like two inches higher in the rear so if you're planning to tow a bunch and you don't have air ride or adjustable airbags load level suspension you're probably going to want to use the included shackles me personally the most this thing's going to haul is probably biggie to the track and we do still have the airbags i just have to make new brackets and relocate them so i can use them but all in all guys and I might lose some of you on this, but I prefer the look and the ride quality of this way over what it was with the 3312.5s and the 3-inch lift. So, that's my opinion. Nightmares in my head, I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear that my mind fills up into a creature.